Emily here from Fret Planet. I'm going to show you two beginner chords called D and G. So let's start with D. You're going to put your first finger on the second fret third string. You're going to put your second finger on the second fret first string. And at the same time, you're going to reach over to the third fret second string with your third finger. So it's a three finger chord shape. Now with this one, we're only going to strum from the fourth string through. So the end goal should be to make it sound like this. You should ultimately be able to hear all four of those notes clearly. But this is a challenging chord shape, so make sure that you're way up on the fingertips, pinching that chord, and give it lots of practice. Let's practice it a little bit together. Let's play four measures of down strum quarter notes on the D chord. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and one. measure two, three, four. Now let's try the G chord. Now the D and G chord change is really important because you hear it in countless classic songs and modern songs and I'm sure you will for many years to come. So this is sort of its partner chord. Here's how it goes. First finger 2nd fret, 5th string, 2nd finger, 3rd fret, 6th string, and your 3rd finger is going to curl way up and reach over to the 3rd fret, 1st string. Now you can play all 6 strings with this chord, so your end result should sound like this. Nice, big, full, beautiful chord. Let's play that with down strum quarter notes for four measures. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two more measures, one. One, one, two, three, four. Now we're going to go between the two chords. We're going to practice that change. So we're going to do four measures of D, down strum quarter notes, and then switch to four measures of G, down strum quarter notes. Now if you're not ready to try it with the strumming and the chord change yet, that's okay. Pause the video, give yourself plenty of practice time to get that down. If you're ready, let's head right into it. So start with the D chord. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Right. 
Now, if you're ready, let's do the same thing, only with eighth note alternate strumming. If you don't know what that is, make sure you watch the E minor and A lesson, um, as well as the C and A minor lesson. So start with D, four measures each. One, two, three, four, and one. Right, now there's one more thing I want to talk about. There is a second way to play the G chord that's very similar. And I'll tell you why after I show you the shape. Okay, so here's the G shape with three fingers the way we just did it. Now you can also do it by moving your third finger to the second string and by adding your fourth finger onto the third fret of the fourth string like this. Now a lot of people like to do the G chord this way because it makes the change between G and D a little easier in a way. When you do it this way, both the G and the D chords, they share a note. So for both of these chord shapes, your third finger is going to stay in the same exact place. It's going to stay at the second string third fret. So it can kind of act as a pivot point between the two chords. You see how I'm changing those without moving my third finger? So try it out. If you like it better, go with it. If you like the three finger G chord better, go with it. Both are correct and both are valid and useful and wonderful. By the way, this four finger G is also commonly referred to as the Beatles G. So that is your guitar knowledge for today.